Hey, this is Dave at the Shepherd School, and today we're going to make something called sugar dye, which is an antibacterial wound dressing that's typically used for by farriers and uh, uh, farmers for treating things like thrush and horses and abscesses and those sorts of things. But it's also used for uh, people too, if you uh, know about it. So let me show you how we're gonna make it. We just got a little bucket here and we've got some sugar and we've got some betadine wound scrub or you could use provodine it doesn't really matter just some iodine based uh, antibacterial now with the sugar you would think that this is going to feed an infection and it would if it was um, diluted but we're going to use this uh, full strength and sugar and honey has been used historically since ancient times to promote healing and to prevent infection but you have to use it dry so we're going to mix it with the iodine and it's always best to start with about as much sugar as you're going to want sugar dye because if you add the sugar to the iodine uh, you'll end up using a whole lot more than, uh, than you wanted now with the iodine use about half that but we've got a little bit extra okay now with the iodine and you just add the iodine to it you want to uh, realize that iodine is poisonous in large concentrations if you end up adding or putting 10% iodine on about 30% of your body. People have been known to die from that. That's why we're, uh, you know, they don't use it very much anymore. I've got a link on the blog. Of how to actually use this stuff but they pack it around abscesses and, and put it in puncture wounds and then put a bandage around it and uh, the idea is that if the wound weeps and this dilutes out, you want to remove it and replace it. But all we're doing is just mixing the sugar and the iodine up till you get to a nice peanut butter or thick honey type consistency. And so, like right now, Bear, he got cut and he's got some stitches but he keeps pulling on them we keep putting a uh, collar around it, but it keeps getting that thing off. So if I put this on there and then wrap it in a bandage, then that will help prevent infection. See how the, that's kind of gooey. And this, you, this doesn't necessarily have a shelf life. It's not gonna go bad sitting here, but you still wanna use regular precautions of keep it away from heat and light but especially moisture, because moisture is what will mess this up. So, like I said, um, I've got a little link on the blog for you to get some more information. I'm not a doctor, and this is a home remedy, so um, you need to use your good common sense and do your own research. But this is something that's, that's easily done. It's relatively inexpensive, especially use the provodine instead of the betadine and uh, could probably come in useful in a situation where you don't have access to antibiotics, especially since bacteria is not going to get a resistance to this like it would, uh, you know, a pill. So, anyway, until next time, you can always catch us online at www.tngun.com.